This is a Kairos moment. Hallelujah. It's a teaching hour. Oh my God. What a release on the bishop. Bless the name of the Lord. So I want to say that I'm a beneficiary of this release. And I'm here because there was an injection through his ministry while in Guyana. And I'm one of those who did not even think about coming to America because I don't want to go to the embassy and be turned back. Hello. I don't want to go and spend my money and tell me I can't come. So I never bothered going. Hello. But it's nothing like when your season is upon you. Hallelujah. I received a call inviting me to come to the convention. They thought I had a visa. I said, no, I don't have. Well, go and get one. So I went in in fear and trembling. I did what I had to do. When I got into the embassy, I recognized I don't have all the papers they might need. But the application was through. Somebody say, your season. Hallelujah. When your season is upon you, no devil, no demon can stop what God is about to do in you and through you. They asked me some questions. Some of them I could have answered. Some I said I don't have. But when she was finished with me, he says, Sir, your application has been approved. Come on, somebody! Hallelujah! And so, I was destined to be here. Before the foundation of the world, God knew that I would have been here, hallelujah, at this time in this season to be with you in this mighty convention. Oh, somebody give the Lord some praise in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so I bring you greetings to my family, my wife. She's the most beautiful woman in my world. I have three anointed sons, mighty men of God. They're flung with us in ministry. And I thank God for children who have decided to serve Jesus. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Having a great church is not as important, come on, somebody, as having your children walk with God with you in your ministry. And I bless the Lord for what he has done. Of course, it's not magic. you got to put in some work. But thank God he's brought them through. And I rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I believe the Lord has sent me to you to give your word in season. Hallelujah. And before you sit, help me. To, help me uh, let's read together from the book of 1 Kings. Chapter 18. Hallelujah. Somehow or the other, when I got up from church, I had a, 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 a feeling that I've been asked to minister tonight. Somehow, I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. First Kings chapter 18 from verse 4 to 1. And we're going to read down to verse 4 to 4. Hallelujah. It says, then Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Ahab and Elijah rather went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And seven times, oh my God, somebody says seven. I heard number seven tonight. Hallelujah. And seven times he said, go again. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising up out, out of the sea. So he said, Go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariots and go down before the rain stops you. Holy Spirit, this is your service. 
Anoint feeble lips of clay and have your way in the name of Jesus. You may have your seats tonight. Hallelujah. God has asked me to say that as convention that the drought is over. Elijah said to Ahab in a season of famine. Famine was in the land for several years. But through the mouths of the prophet of God, God said, Ahab, go up, eat, and drink. Oh my God. Because I am about to send an abundance of rain. In other words, the drought is over. And I'm here to declare to the church, the body of Christ, the convention that you have nothing to fear because God says your drought is over. You are not going to barely survive, barely make it. Come on, somebody. Barely succeed. I said to somebody today that God says the drought is over. God says to the prophet, I see an abundance of rain. Hallelujah. Tell somebody that your rain is about to fall like I've never seen it fall before. Hallelujah. I'm talking here about a rain sent by Almighty God. Because the only recipe for famine is rain. For drought is rain. Hallelujah. When is the drought on the land? There is seed in the earth, but can't produce until rain begins to fall. And I want to declare to the convention that God has placed seed in the nations of this earth. Hallelujah. And he's about to send a Holy Ghost rain to cause the seed to begin to germinate and to grow. This is why God said to the psalmist, Psalm 2, he says, he asks the question, why do the nations rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. There's a raging taking place in the nations. Hallelujah. If you check nations, their policies, their ideologies, their philosophies are all against the word of God. Even right here in America, a nation founded on the word of God. There's a drifting away from the word of God. And so God is sending a holy drought into many nations. Hallelujah. The nations are raging. There's a rage in the nations. That is why earthquakes will continue to come. Hurricanes will continue to come. Disasters will continue to hit the nations of the world. Because there's a rage taking place in the nations of the earth. Look around the world, many trouble spots. In, on the continents of this globe. In Africa, Ebola is raging. In the Caribbean, there is what they call chikungunya. A disease raging. Somebody hear me today. Internal strife in many nations of the earth. And nobody has got the answer. Yeah. It is a time the nations need to hear the word of God. It is now. It is a time the nations need to hear about Jesus. It is now. He is the answer to the turmoil in the nations of the earth. Yeah. And so God is preparing the nations for revival. The rage that is taking place in the nations is just an opportunity. Someone say opportunity. For God to bring his revival in nations. Because with all that is happening, all the, uh, the, the, the breakout of diseases in the nations, the internal strife in the nations, Men will recognize that this thing is more than us. Come on, somebody. Jesus will bring his word to pass. 
He says, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God is about, I tell you, to step into every nation on this globe to build his church and the devil can't stop it. Oh, Because Satan is not in charge of the nations. The nations belong to God. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. That includes America, includes Guyana, includes the nations in Africa. Every nation on the globe, Jesus died for. And he would allow the nations to be destroyed by the hands of men. The destruction that we see here is a setup. Come on, in the nations, it's a setup for God's revival. And so it is a time that the church must arise. Hello, somebody. And answer the call of God to go into all the world and preach the gospel in his now. Because Jesus says, he says to disciples one time, he says, the harvest is white. It is ready. Ready to be harvested. Ready for, pick, for, for, for picking. Hallelujah. He says, don't let say we got four months and then comes the harvest. The harvest is now. The Bible says now is the acceptable time. Now is the time of salvation. Convention church, the nations needs Jesus. And now is the time to preach like never before. I'm so blessed to hear what God is doing to this army. Hallelujah. Around the globe, oh my God. You are in the spirit. You are fulfilling the word of God. Hallelujah. And I want to prophesy to you that come next year, this time, this congregation will double twice. Come on, somebody. Because God is about to bring a harvest amongst you because you've been laboring. You've been sowing seeds. And so Bible says, God says to say to you that he's about to honor your sacrifice. Somebody give the Lord some praise in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God says make space for the harvest. Make room for the harvest. God said this building is too small for the harvest. God says to say to somebody, come on, it is time to expand. Expand your borders because I'm about to send a harvest that will surprise you. The drunkards are coming. The prostitutes are coming. Oh, Bo Shabbat Santai. Those who are wayward are coming. Those who are idolatrous, they are coming. Those who are against God, they are coming because they can't withstand this rain as about to hit the church of the living God. God is sending rain in the house of the Lord. There will be an pouring of God's anointing in the church of the living God. I'm going to break down and kick down every wall that stands before the church of the living God. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. It's the time the church gets to get radical is now. It's the time for the church to get aggressive is now. Jesus said, he says from the time or from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom suffers violence. Somebody begin to do like this. Come on, get violent in your spirit. But the violent, but the violent, but the aggressive, but the forceful, gonna take it. Hear me, hear me, hear me. The devil don't give you nothing easy. Hello. He won't give up nations easily. Hello, somebody. You can't take nations with two minute prayer. And, oh, my God. You can't take nations. Hello, somebody. By just having church 
on Sunday or coming to church on Sunday. You got to get aggressive in the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. You got to have a passion in you. Amen. The thing that moved God must move you. And what moved God is the souls of men and women. Oh my God. Somebody give the Lord a shout in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I heard God saying, as you continue to step out in faith and gather the harvest, God says, you're going to visit this harvest. Visit this house. With double. Double for your trouble. Oh my God. Serving the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Serving the Lord and doing his will will bring us trouble. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Once you're doing the will of the Lord, you're going to be persecuted for your faith. For your belief. But let me tell you something. The more we are persecuted, the more our faith grows to the next level. The more we suffer for the kingdom's sake, is the more the anointing of God will fall upon us. And if the time the church needs to be anointed, is now. Somebody say now. Somebody say now. Oh my God, this is why Jesus said, in fact, it was, it, it, it was the apostles he was talking to after his resurrection. And the last thing he said before he went up to his father, he said to them, don't you worry about times and seasons. Amen. They had, a, they had a, an agenda that was far removed from the agenda of the Christ and of his kingdom. They were talking about something political. Are you hearing me? Amen. If Jesus will come to take over, Israel, but the Lord says, Hey, don't worry with that, that's not your business. The Father knows the time and the season, but right now, I want you to do something go into the upper room and wait for the promise of the Father because, uh, amen, you're gonna receive power. Somebody say, Power, you're gonna receive power after the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. The Holy Ghost is not to make us feel nice. Oh, Boshaba. It's not a make us just get some goose pimps in our skin. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. But the Holy Ghost was sent for the church to take the world for Jesus. And therefore, I want to declare to the church, uh, amen, God wants us to begin to have uh, not anymore a local perspective uh, of the harvest, come on somebody, but God wants us to begin to have a global perspective uh, of the harvest, uh, because this anointing, uh, amen, is for Jerusalem, uh, for Judea, for Samaria, and to the uttermost parts uh, of the world. Is anybody ready to travel to nations? I am ready. I am ready. What about you? Amen. If you think God is moving in America alone, I tell you, you, amen. You got to go around the world to see what God is doing. Hallelujah. For I came to the States, I had four nights of crusade meetings in my church. Hallelujah. And somehow or the other, when Harvest Army came to Guyana, there was such an impartation. Come and give the Lord a hand of praise for your bishop, for his wife, he, he oversee callings, and for yourself. Thank you for sending them. Thank you for sending them. Thank you for obeying the voice of the Lord. Hello. Churches are coming together. Pastors are coming together to make plans for the kingdom of God. Because you recognize that no one pastor, no one church can do this thing. We need a whole church. Somebody said this thing is for the whole church. Oh yes. And God is not leaving out anybody once you are named by the name of Jesus. And you feel with the Holy Ghost. I tell you God is ready to work with you. Hello. Hello, somebody. 
The Bible says the earth is groaning. There's a groaning in the earth. Waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Oh my God, I feel like screaming right now. I thank God for the day he stepped into my doorstep. Oh my God. And called me to himself and made me a son of God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. For his grace and his mercy and his goodness towards me. Oh, he could have passed and go to the next door neighbor. But when he saved me, he came right to my address. He came with us. Oh my God. He came with an assignment because he knew I was destined to trouble the enemy. This time to cause confusion in the camp of darkness. And I tell you what, I thank God for his grace. Oh, Shaka. Hallelujah. And I want to say to somebody, you are in the kingdom not to waste time. You are in the kingdom for such a time as this. To be a part of what God is doing and is about to do. He's about to bring revival to the nations of the world. I've been hearing some reports what is happening in certain nations of the globe. Places like China. Communist nation. Hallelujah. Russia. Some of these places that we considered hard. God is moving. God is moving. Amen. The churches are not any longer undercover. They are breaking out. I say they're breaking out. And all the laws in place, all the regulations in place uh, to keep the church down, I tell you, they can't stop it. Because this is not a move of a man. This is a move of almighty God. If God can step from eternity in the time, what more he can do? Hello, man. Nations are not too hard for God to, over, to overtake. And I tell you, this is the, the season that God is coming after, going after the nations of the earth. Setting us up strategically. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. For us to go to the nations of the earth. You are privileged. Because America is a blessed country. And once you have a U.S. citizenship, you can go to any nation. Almost on the face of the earth. So this is a strategic time. Oh my God, you didn't get it. God has designed that you be a part of this move. Hello. Because there's easy access into nations. Oh my God. You should, you should be shouting and excited, man. You think you're just here to make a lot of money? Help me, Holy Ghost. Just here to get influence and affluence? There's a greater assignment. A greater mandate. Come on, somebody. A greater responsibility to the rest of the world. Are you hearing me? As it is in the natural, so it is in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. And God has given you a mandate to step into nations with the word of God in your mouth. The rain and the drought that came on the land of Israel then come because there was some natural phenomenon that was taking place. It came because the prophetic word sounded. And Elijah said, at my word, there shall neither be, there be, be rain or dew in this land until I, until I make another sound. You don't know the power that's in your mouth. Oh, hallelujah. You don't have, have no idea the power in your tongue. That's why you got to watch what you're saying. Are you hearing me? You can't just talk any wild stuff. You got to gauge what comes out of your mouth. Because there's power in your tongue. 
The Bible says death and life is in the power of the tongue. You can kill with your tongue. You can destroy with your tongue. You can also build up with your tongue. There's power in the spoken words. Tell your neighbor, you're a speaking spirit. Just like God. We were created in his image. In his likeness. And when God stepped on the, on the scene, he saw there was darkness on the face of the earth. He said, hey, I got to change this thing. He opened his mouth and he said, let there be light. And there was light. Because God is a spirit and he speaks. Hallelujah. When I tell you a sharing of God, when you open your mouth and make a declaration, they tell you, watch and see the fulfillment. And so Elijah said, at my word, neither rain nor dew. And this is the dimension God is bringing the church today. Hello, somebody. Where nations, governments of the day will have to open their ears, come on somebody, and start to listen to the church of the living God because we understand who we are. We are a prophetic people. Come on, a prophetic army. That, amen. The, 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 the powers of uh, at B must, must tremble when, when they hear somebody coming to see them from Harvest Army. Hello! They have trembled when here Elijah was coming. This trouble of Israel. Hello, we got to trouble some things in this ungodly system of the world. Amen. There are ungodly systems and structures that got to come down to make way. Oh my God. For what God is about to do. And so the prophets got to operate. As well as the apostles. Because how many know this is an apostolic and prophetic season? Come on, somebody. Hello. The prophets speak the word and the apostolic coming and exercise rule and authority over the nations. Come on, somebody. Because the Bible says we are the head and not the tail. We are, we are above and not Beneath. We gotta stop every eye pass. Come on, somebody, from the systems of this world and begin to operate as though we are the people of Almighty God. You know, we, we are the rightful citizens. Come on, come on, somebody, come on, somebody. We are clothed with the glory of God. Hallelujah. And therefore, we can infect and affect our environment. Hallelujah. Anybody here ready to become a troubler of the devil's camp? A trouble of the enemy's territory? Come on, somebody. America belongs to God. Every nation on the globe belongs to God. But the devil won't let it go so easily. We've got to trouble some things. And the prophetic word has a way of causing trouble. Hello. Whether you like it or not, thus said the Lord. Amen. Hello, somebody. You know, it was John the Baptist who said to the king, Hello, you cannot be uh, said to the, yes, you can't have another man's wife. It is wrong. It is abomination. It is ungodly. Hello, somebody. The church is going to come to the point or the place to ensure there's a dividing wall between righteousness and wickedness. Because the Bible says that sin, come on, righteousness exalts. Hallelujah. But sin brings a reproach. Sin will always bring consequences. And many nations today, many families today, many individuals today are experiencing the consequences of sin. Sin will take us to hell. Take us away from the presence of Almighty God. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is
is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God in the midst of death, in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of confusion. God is offering to the nations life. In other words, they can hope again. They can live again. Come on, somebody. They can prosper again. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a time for restoration. Because revival brings restoration. Revival calls everybody to line up. Amen. To the kingdom of almighty God. Someone give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Look at the scripture. Elijah said, there's going to be an abundance of rain. And so he said to Ahab, go up and eat and drink. Hallelujah. You know, God promises to cause the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. When the rain began to fall in the church, I tell you, even the heathen they benefit. When prosperity hit the church, the heathen, the ungodly will benefit as well. Hallelujah. He went up to the top of Carmel and then he said to the servant, go up now, look toward the sea. Hallelujah. You see, you got to have a revelation. A revelation of this abundance of rain. Hello. A revelation that comes from heaven. In fact, revelation will either come from God or from the devil. But God's people come as somebody. You must have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. And I should see what God wants to show us. Are you hearing me? So he said to his servant, go up and see. He says there's nothing. Oh my God. There is nothing. Is there somebody here who's asking some questions with all that the church is doing? We not, maybe they don't know uh, why. Because maybe in your eyes you're not seeing something. Hello, somebody. But hear what he says. There is nothing. And seven times he said, go again. That is so important. In other words, what you are doing, don't stop doing. Until you meet your seventh hour. Because the seventh hour speaks of completion and fulfillment in the realm of the spirit of God. Hello. Hello somebody. And all your laboring, all your sowing, amen. I said to you, to, to, uh, said to you tonight, uh, your seventh hour is about to hit you. Hello, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. So you can't stop now. You got to keep doing what you're doing uh, until the breakthrough comes. Until the breakout comes. Until, I tell you, God do exceedingly abundantly what you might ask or think somebody hear me tonight hallelujah because your seventh hour is upon you oh mm. boy hallelujah don't be weary in well doing hallelujah you're going to reap if you faint not don't be tired of giving. Whether it is money, your time, your talents, your abilities. Come on somebody. Don't get weary because your seventh hour is about to hit you. Oh my God. Somebody should start screaming right there. Hallelujah. Amen. You keep doing what you're doing until you experience a breakthrough in your situation. Somebody here is saying, you know what? I am giving and giving and giving, but I see nothing. Don't stop now. Go again. Because your seventh hour is about to come upon you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Tell you never don't give up now. Don't turn back now. Don't hold back your faith. Don't hold back 
your finances. Don't hold back your time. Don't hold back your abilities. Don't hold back your talents. Because your seventh hour is about to hit you. Woo! Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, yes. God is faithful to his word. If you sow, you shall reap. Hallelujah. Reaping time is coming, church. Reaping time is upon you. I see, the, I hear the sound of abundance of rain about to hit the harvest army. The time is now. Get ready for your seventh hour. Somebody give the Lord some praise. Give the Lord some praise. Give the Lord some Holy Ghost praise. Give the Lord some Holy Ghost praise. Your seventh hour, I hear the song. It's a song in the realm of the Spirit. God says, I'm about to bless you like never before. I'm about to show up for you like never before. Don't give up now. We are not of them that look back. But we are of them of faith. Come on, somebody. God said at one time to Lot, I want to take you into a new place. I want to take you into a new season of your life. Lot, you disobeyed me. You were living in a place where I tell you, you barely survived there. Sodom and Gomorrah. But God was merciful. He says, hey, get out of that place. It's a new place. Because the place that you are going to corrupt you. Going to destroy you. Get out from here. I want to take you to a new place. Hallelujah. But when you go and you say, get out, don't look back. And they stepped out in faith. She just thinks about faith. Tell somebody about faith. When you start on faith, you can't turn back. It's difficult to lick us up. Hello, somebody. And Lot's wife was out physically. But she was not out mentally. Not out emotionally. Hello. Her heart was there. Her little string was there. Her allegiance was still there. She missed Sodom and Gomorrah. So she looked back. We all know the story. She turned a pillar of salt. In other words, she ceased to exist. This is a serious moment in our time. Hello, somebody. God is speaking to the church. God is declaring his word to the church. It's not time to look back. It's time to agree with God. To participate. Come on, somebody. With God. With what God is doing. Because the seventh hour is upon you. Stand with me, church. Stand with me, church. Robo Shaba. Come on, lift those hands and start to bless the Lord. Start to bless the Lord. Come on. Begin to magnify the Lord. Begin to magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Come, revival is upon you. Come on, somebody. Your seventh hour is upon you. Somebody begin to bless the Lord. Show your hands in the air. Come on. Thank God for your salvation. Thank God for using you. Thank God you can become a part of God's army. A part of the revival in this time, in this season. Lift your hands and begin to bless the Lord. And give Him glory. And give Him praise. Hallelujah. 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 Babo Sharawusa. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Come on, somebody find a worship. Find a praise to the Lord. Could I ask you, the worship group? Oh, Robo Shaba. Maybe to stand by, amen, to just worship it us a bit. Robo Sharabo Sabantai. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Oh, Robo Shantan, oh, Robo Shabantai. I mean, I'm feeling led of the Lord to begin to just pray with people here today. Amen. There's a passion stirred up in your spirit to go to the nations of the globe with the word of Almighty God. And I want to release something in you. Hallelujah. Before you leave here tonight. Hallelujah. So I want you to come. 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 God is about to do something special in your life.
just come to the altar. I want us to pray. Is that okay? I have the permission. Hallelujah. Let's come to the altar. I want to release an anointing in your spirit. Hallelujah. It's a new season. Oh my God. It's a new day. A fresh anointing is flowing my way. Holy Spirit, I pray tonight for release of your anointing for your revival. An anointing that the Lord have never known before that will cause them to break out. Hallelujah. Will cause them for to affect nations for the glory of your name. In the name of Jesus. Come lift up those hands. I pray God you begin to stir them up in the name of Jesus. Cause your servants to help to become pregnant, Lord, with the harvest of the nations of the world in the name of Jesus. And right now I come against fear. I come against unbelief in the name of Jesus. Amen. Right now, I, I, Lord, I, I break down every door and every wall that stands before them and their destiny in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, I release an anointing right now to touch and to fill your people in Jesus' name. Let's receive it now. Come and receive it. Receive, 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 receive this anointing that's flowing right now. Lift your hands up and receive it now. Receive it now, receive it now, receive it now, receive it now. Oh, oh Shabbat, receive it now in the name of Jesus and anointing for world harvest. Receive it now, receive it now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, only God to release an anointing of God in the name of Jesus. Rabo Shanta Nanabanda, release an anointing right now, right now, right now. Rabo Shanta. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, set it ablaze, set it ablaze with fire, 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 set them ablaze with the fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. You shall be anointed with fire. 
I release fire in the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus fire in the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus release the fire of God right now to touch and to consume the servants of God in Jesus name receive the fire of the Holy Ghost of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus, receive fire. Robo Shaba Santa. Fire. Jesus' name. Fire in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I release fire. Holy Ghost and fire. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost and fire. In Jesus' name. Halabo Shaba Santa. Yeah, Holy Ghost on fire in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. John said concerning Jesus. When he comes, he's going to baptize us with the Holy Ghost. And with fire. Fire. Somebody say fire. Somebody say fire. The nations need a fire of the Holy Ghost. You're going to shout fire three times. Come on. Are you ready? Are you ready? When I say three, when I shout fire. Come on. One, two, three. Come on. One, two, three. One, two, three. Fire. fire! Fire to the enemy. Fire to nations. In the name of Jesus. Fire to the camp of the enemy. Come on, church. So much of fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 